Yeah, sorry. Right. Mark Clevin in here is a bit of an experiment too, because Clev itself is a bit of an experiment. In fact, the Institute's a bit of an experiment, being what I would call psychologically minded is a bit of an experiment. You might even say human existence is a bit of an experiment. A bit of a more broad mind. <clears throat> Nonetheless, we're here tonight specifically to share a little bit of history. I suppose we might call it gay intellectual history in the sense of the paper that I'm going to read tonight to you. Uh, on which, uh, in the uh, journal that appeared in spring 71, it's called here is an original copy of the journal itself, and it came out, uh, was uh, originally an annual. I think by this time it might have been twice a year. I think since then it's been twice a year it's come out. Uh, this, is, this is where it appears uh, originally. Uh, but was probably, and that's was published, when is that, 91, Roger? Yes. Uh, but was probably written in eight, 1988. <sighs> My word, that's, that's probably not older than some people born here. But <laughs> that's, that's a while back. <laughs> Just to let you know before we get into it, because I'm, I'm going to actually, believe it or not, read this old antique to you. <laughs> and, and the version that was actually published in this journal, uh, which, as you might imagine, is not exactly the version which was originally written, uh, because, as any of you know who uh, publish material uh, in journals or in magazines or elsewhere, uh, editors always like to have their say. <laughs> and there are actually a variety of uh, more subtle and less subtle um, changes that the editors uh, excuse the word impose on the uh, final version uh, that are not actually in the original manuscript, starting with the damn title. They picked the damn title as it appears in this uh, journal, Young and Homophobia. That, I had no idea that it was, I had no say in that. It was just sprung on me because they happened to have this theme this time on phobias. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you know. <laughs> so they porn shoot the damn thing, and by giving this title, it sounded like it fit in. I kid you not, let me, let me tell you some of the other titles of this theme. <laughs> Get this The Fear of the Fellows, Fear of Aging, Fear of Semen, Then Jung and Homophobia. Why Men Are Mad. The shadow is alive in the terrestrial Jerusalem. That's their focus. Don't ask me, but there it is, right in the middle of that. <laughs> Young and homophobia. Well, that's nice of them to, to do that to it, but that's not its real title. So I've restored that, as you can see, uh, if you notice the flyer for this evening. I have uh, restored, make sure that the title got restored. That's on here. A new theory of male homosexuality and the Jewish and as gay with them. Uh, 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 an illustration that I'll reference, this is a uh, figure of the double, a dual god, an ancient Egyptian figure, uh, with the two heads of the two twin polar opposite um, deities, Horus and Set, on one body. So it's an actual deity, a figure um, conceived of uh, in uh, ancient Egyptian imagery, which I will reference in the article. So it's like, I point that it's on the flyer here. But anyway, that was not very, I didn't think that was very nice of them to change that title like that, just to let you know. Uh, there'll be a few other places as I read along. Um, first of all, there's a couple places where there's typos, unfortunately, that were not caught. I'll point them out when we get to them. Uh, and also, uh, there's a, a couple of, uh, I don't know what to call it, just so overwhelmingly egregious editorial alterations, I can't stomach it as I read it to you. I wasn't looking it over before I came in and comparing it with the original manuscript version and, and how they altered it in some uh, places are uh, just too much. I, I had a debate with my own head about whether or not to read to you the published version versus the original manuscript version. They're, they're approximately in terms of the bigger sweep, more or less the same thing. It's not like they mauled it terribly or anything, but they like to stick their sticky fingers into things, not necessarily in a beneficial way. And there's a few of them that are pretty egregious. You have a little something you want? Yeah. No, so what is, your, what is the original title, or the, your proposed title? That's what I, the new theory of male homosexuality, individuation as gay. Okay. That's the article on Yeah, I didn't get that. Yeah, individuation as gay. Believe it or not, this is, a, this is some 
some phenomenal number to say what that, that phrase. I'll repeat it again. Individuation as gay. That's what they erased, the publishers of the article erased by completely making up an entire new title for it. Not only that, but of course then they completely erased the, um, the intellectual construction I had made between the meaning of the title and then all the things I talk about in the article, which are all based on that title and all focused around that title and thus distilled by the title. They went and erased the title to give you an idea. So I don't mean they went through the whole damn text like that, uh, but they had their sticker fingers all through it. And um, uh, uh, there's a few places that are just too much. I can't bear to read it to you without noticing. There are not many that are just too heavy. Other than going to read it along like it is. Uh, now, the reason for reading it now, uh, perhaps, uh, can be fingered in lots of different kinds of ways. Um, here I would like to point out, uh, first of all, my own personal struggle to want to understand uh, uh, what I was experiencing in terms of understanding myself um, as a psychological person in a way that appreciated how I was homosexual in a way that was also appreciative of how that homosexuality felt more than personal, as I experienced it personally, let's call it transpersonal. And I found that whereas I uh, at first might have looked to um, more traditional spiritual directions to comprehend that dimension of homosexual experience, that uh, uh, something felt lacking in me around my own satisfaction or fulfillment of a grasp or relationship, as I wanted the understanding of what I wanted to understand to help me relate to that thing I wanted to understand, not some way I didn't want understanding of it to be some way to confine it, to control it, to actually really get rid of it then, you know. Uh, but rather to have a real relationship with something which I didn't at first didn't understand at all. At first, I really didn't want to understand. And even my own motives did not want to understand. Unless I looked deeper under my own first motive, that level of motives, to more, again, motives that become also personal, interested in, in, in motifs which are not just personal to me. Or I can have no more and more notice those aspects in myself which are not just personal to me. Well, they are personal to me, not just personal to me. And especially trying to feel even more deeply into those matters. Uh, that's the capacity that I feel was opened up to me all along in my psychological training, which started, if you haven't been here for other times I've shared this stuff, uh, more or less uh, uh, in a self-aware way when I was 13 years old. <clears throat> and I uh, made my mother uh, take me to start my own uh, introduction of uh, uh, therapy by uh, being taken to what's called a child guidance center. Let me tell her why. Uh, and since then, I have been learning and practicing more and more getting into one understand this, but as not just to be psychological, it's a way to understand being gay. What we might not call being gay, being homosexual, uh, as a feeling, as a desire, as a motivation, as something to identify with, as something that then I discovered more and more became a journey of being, a journey of life, a journey of being. What does it mean if we say we might identify in this kind of way and become uh, things that so so political terms might be called a minority, as you might conceive of it now, the minority of, of gays and lesbians and and bisexuals and transgenders, or however we want to <coughs> conceive of the particulars of that. that, that I'm re trying to reference some of the ideational roots of these uh, current uh, concepts. Uh, but uh, those that have to relate to a psychological comprehension of homosexual experience, and that experience cannot be separated from the fact that the experience is in, in and about being a person. There's no experience except experience that's personal. So I'm speaking here for myself as being personal sharing with you, this would be this discussion that I wrote all those many years ago uh, on these uh, union, in this union form in terms of posing things in a union kind of way. Uh, uh, this was my second foray in a serious union direction to, to speak, so to speak, through this article. The first having been the earlier article, the double, which I shared in here, what, a couple months ago, I believe, you know. Uh, I read that article that appeared in the spring of 1976. Uh, and so this is now, uh, I wrote this in then 88, and it did not appear until 91, so that's a, that's a bit of a stretch there. Uh, and I find that itself real, real interesting. Uh, if you like, I want to invite you to, um, if you uh, were exposed to the earlier article, you heard it or are familiar with it, I invite you to compare this one as, uh, with the idea of it being a progression uh, from the early one in terms of how to understand homosexual phenomena from a Jungian point of view, with incredible
increasing interest in that as it relates to being a person. Here, uh, the notion of being a person in a Jungian sense. Uh, Jung is very concerned with all of his, in all of his works, of painting a sense of what it might mean from the system of understanding that's called Jungian, what it might mean to be a person, both in its moment-by-moment uh, uh, moment beingness, uh, which is a subject of reality, not an object of reality, but we might say object of in and subjectivity, meaning a factuality that can be related to, whether we pick one theory or another, or Freud's theory or Jung's or whoever's. Uh, but here, most importantly, as that relates to the development of a person with uh, uh, a deeper sense of meaning, a deeper sense of person, which is never associated with anything considered objectively true in the spiritual sense, as religions would do, as all religions would do, for example, uh, but rather only concerns itself with a domain called subjective of these matters. Uh, um, and from within that viewpoint, okay, how to conceive of things uh, in a careful, technical way. So I'm not talking about some, some um, um, amateur consideration of taking Jung. There are many, many writers nowadays, especially it's not abated, by the way, ever since Jung first started writing, people take his writings from all kinds of fields and they just dip a little bit into it and they write something that has a little Jungian flavor, has a little Jungian pocket or a Jungian aspect, and now I'm going to get into the archetypes. Like this, the various gay writers who do that in more contemporary ways, uh, uh, kind of dip into these things. Uh, but, but Jung's uh, considerations uh, for himself did not uh, uh, exist only as ideas or notions, but rather as a way to live, rather a way to feel, to exist, to live, especially from now to the future as an authentic human being. As much as that could be proceeded with and, and gotten at more and more sincerely and fully. Uh, uh, and it, that, that philosophy is not just unique to it. Jung's approach, by the way, it's, it's common with various of the, uh, the founders of psychoanalytic uh, tradition uh, and uh, some of the more serious uh, followers since. Uh, and uh, that's why I'm interested in this line of articles. I've written other kinds of things over the years, uh, some of you may know. Uh, but my most serious interest has been in this more um, technical or learned Jungian direction. Learn by learned Jungian, I mean, well, it might not seem like it, just as was when I read the double article last time, uh, a couple of uh, months ago. Uh, it may not seem like it, but these are fairly technical discussions within the theoretical format uh, of the journal. That's why it's a journal, okay? So while it's a, hopefully of ease of reading, Oh, and can be read um, as any of these materials ought to be by any um, um, sensitive, non-technical reader. Okay, they're written for a technical audience, believe it or not. Uh, if you notice in the article I'm going to read to you, it has something like about 91 or so footnotes in it, and it's about 15 pages long. <laughs> That's an example of what I mean. It's but a, keep in mind, though, it is a, a snapshot of the literature, a discussion of what the topic of the article is, uh, of the time, of the level of discourse and the Jungian literature at the time. So if you go back to a time now, uh, in order to grasp uh, perhaps the world of the article a little bit, because uh, you'll see, like with movies, you know, when you watch a movie now, it's obvious, the more time it separates from making up the movie from the point of watching it, the more one notices that gap, you know, in, in movies age, and you all see that. Uh, and they go through all different, I certainly go through different stages of experience in watching a movie as I age, and it gets older and older, and that's more and more ridiculous in a way, and they need to pass being ridiculous. <laughs> so retarding in a whole different way. And I'm sure uh, other younger generations will even experience that more. And also true of written things. Of course, anything written reflects the time and the existence of the writer of the time it was written, and the experience of the writer of the time of, of it was writing. And that's certainly true of this piece here. Uh,